everybody, this is Praxis, and I got a whole lot of work done at the end of the day yesterday. In fact, the entire wall, I was able to do the entire stone wall. And all I had for this morning when I started was a little bit of void here that I had to kind of backfill and and then finished up putting all the grass pieces on there. And I did end up having all the grass pieces that I needed. And uh, the reason for that is because I have a lot of areas with exposed stone here, as it turns out, like these steps, for example, right here. There's a good four to five square feet of stone here, as I look down, that aren't grass uh, block uh, areas. So between that and kind of the entire periphery over here, I was able to save enough on grass that I had not only enough to finish filling in, in the entire area that I uh, created here, I also had a few extra and I used them to fill some voids around the rest of the yard. So this is going really, really well. What I'm working on right now is uh, I'm putting on a topper layer of this dirt. Now first I took all the straw that I uh, I'd sprinkled over this area and I raked it off to the back over there. It's all just piled up back there. So I got it down to just the uh, grass uh, bits and, and now I'm putting this topper uh, layer on. And I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. Uh, primarily, uh, there are two benefits to this. One is that it is, it's pretty good soil, and the soil that the grass is growing out of right now, it's not really the best soil. This stuff down here, it was just that sandy, kind of silty fill stuff that we've gotten when we put the house in. So it's not the best soil. So adding this on top, this is a better top soil, and uh, you know, it's gonna make the grass, oh, is that a, I've been finding mouse nests. Oh, it's a hibernating mouse, okay. I found a couple of these. I'll show you. This is what the mice do when they hibernate, is they they kind of curl up in a ball, almost like a hedgehog does. Just like that, they curl up like that. Okay, I'm just going to hold this guy. I'm going to release him in the woods, far away from the house. Um, yeah, I found a couple of these in the, in the pile there. So, um, it's going to be, a, you know, it's a better quality soil. Uh, but the other thing is that it's going to help to plug any of the voids that are in this uh, this material right here. Um, as I was putting this together, you know, I've got all these little grass clods and there's little gaps and seams between them. And that is, uh, those are opportunities for, you know, silt and sediment to kind of filter down into the, the dirt area. Um, now, I add, you know, at this point, it's probably somewhere around like two feet of dirt on top of this structure. And, um, and that's great. So, you know, if this was ever used as a radiation shelter and radiation dust kind of sprinkled down on the top here, you'd have a good two feet between you and that dust. But what happens if it rains right after that? You know what the rain is going to do is it's going to wash all that kind of dust and sediment down into this big pile of dirt. So, you know, that two feet of dirt could turn into two inches or nothing at all if it filters all the way down through it. So what I want to do is kind of pre-plug as many of those holes as I can by using this stuff. Uh, it almost is going to be sort of like potassium iodine. You use it for uh, plugging up your thyroid gland. Your thyroid absorbs iodine and you want to saturate it in the event of uh, you know, a nuclear emergency where, uh, with the non-radioactive iodine so that the radioactive iodine you know, won't be getting in there. And this is kind of the same thing. I want to take the non-radioactive silt and dirt and stuff and put a topper layer on this and have the rain kind of wash that in and plug in all of the gaps that I've got down there so that, uh, you know, if there was ever an event, it wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't be having those uh, dust particles uh, go down there, at least not to the same degree. Um, yeah, so I'm working on that. Uh, I, uh, on that topic, I think if, if there ever was some kind of a nuclear event, I would probably, I'd probably get a big sheet of plastic and uh, like, like a tarp or something, like a tarp that, uh, not with holes in it, but like like a plastic sheeting, and put it down over the entire area with area with cinder blocks on the sides, and I would use that in order to, you know, absolutely be sure that you know the dust isn't getting washed down into the soil. Uh, that, you know, that's an extra precaution I might take later, but you know, I want to do whatever I can to cut, try to minimize it if, for whatever reason, I wasn't able to do that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're drawing to a close on this project, and I'm I'm really pleased with it. Uh, you know, it was all awful lot of work. That, that is a shit ton of dirt on there. And I, I know a lot of you guys are Canadians, uh, so you don't use the you know, American imperial system, but so you may not be familiar with a shit ton. Um, a shit ton is the amount of material that it takes to become really, really annoying. <laughs> That's the definition of a shit ton. So uh, yeah, there's definitely that on top there. And it feels good to be on the other side of it. Uh, it's always a great feeling. Whenever you do something and it's a lot of work and you get it done and it's accomplished, I always I always like the feeling you get on the other side of that. And, uh, and this, uh, this part is, you know, put...